There it is, as grand as it gets. The Ariti Award reminds us all the dreams are for everybody and to never, ever, ever give up on your dreams. Through the year, or perhaps, perhaps in a single superlative performance, they, they have, have achieved, achieved a degree of excellence, which, which is suggested in Greek mythology by the concept, by the concept of Ariti. 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 Something my father's always told me, that the determination and the will to win will overcome anything. Mario Andretti, Ariti Award winner in 1991. Courage is telling yourself when you're beat, not when someone else tells you that you're beat. Jackie John and Kersey, a RET Award winner, 1992. Evander Holyfield, a RET Award winner, 1996. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. You have to have the drive and the determination to go out there and play the best that you possibly can. And if somebody tells you that you can't do it, you go out there and prove them wrong. Friends, I'm Jim Nance, and you're about to watch a most inspirational hour of stories from the sports world. The 15th annual Aridi Honors for Courage in Sports. Priest Holmes of the Kansas City Chiefs and other great athletes will introduce you to some truly remarkable people. Plus, we'll honor a personal friend of mine who I'm quite proud of on this day, and we'll take a look back at the greatest moments of the past 15 years of Aridi. It's all coming your way right now. Operation Iraqi Freedom began in March 2003, swiftly and profoundly changing the entire country. Its aftermath created a halting danger for Americans, including civilians. As we watched in horror, the brutal kidnappings and attacks occurring day after day. A daunting challenge lay ahead to stem the violence and heal the hearts and minds of the Iraqi people. And it was just an overwhelming feeling of, like a calling of God that it was my time to do my part. This is the story of one man who stepped bravely into the chaos, a man named Termite. Maurice Termite Watkins grew up in Texas. As a boy, he worked in his family's pest control business, gaining his lifelong nickname Termite. Termite, however, soon found another calling, boxing. As a young fighter, he was known for his slick moves. After a successful professional career, he retired to spend time with his family, but boxing remained in his blood. When the Iraq War began, the 46-year-old learned that the U.S. needed experienced exterminators to aid in the reconstruction effort. So Termite Watkins stepped forward to lend a hand. When I heard my dad was going to Iraq, I thought he was crazy. I was like, you're not going. Termite understood the gravity of his decision and the dangers that faced Americans in post-war Iraq. Still, he answered his calling. It was time for him to serve his country in the best way he knew how. He basically picked himself for the job. He went to them and said, I know how to kill bugs and, and vermin and all that kind of stuff, and they grabbed him up. As the rest of America watched the war from the safety of their living rooms, Termite arrived in Iraq in April 2003. I call it the land of extremes. The flies were the most aggressive flies in, uh, that I've ever seen in my life. They had viper snakes that had extremely long teeth or fangs. It had the most beauty that you could ever imagine. But it was also the most harshest land that you could ever imagine. Termite was over 7,000 miles from home. He had seen the violence and chaos with his own eyes. He had narrowly survived mortar attacks. And through it all, Termite chose to stay. He continued training and soon developed a following, putting soldiers and colleagues through the paces in grueling morning workouts. Okay. Word got around about the exterminator with the quick moves and infectious personality. 
and a few months later, Termite was approached by the Coalition Provisional Authority with an unbelievable request. The leader of the coalition said, Termite, what are the odds of putting together a boxing team and getting somebody qualified for the Olympics? And I said, you got a slim to none chance, maybe a one in a million. He says, great, let's do it. All we need is the one, we don't need the million. Termite knew that dying was a price he was willing to pay for freedom. Steadfast, he began training a group of 24 would-be Iraqi boxers. They were mostly barefooted. Uh, they didn't have the groin protectors. They didn't have mouthpieces. They didn't even have good boxing gloves. They were very aggressive. They were almost like they were fighting for the life. They, they didn't do a whole lot of boxing. They just got in there and got it on. But Termite's biggest hurdle was far more fundamental than poor technique. Free from a brutal regime but wary of this American stranger, the war-torn group of fighters initially distrusted him. But Termite Watkins was determined to prove something to these men and to the world. He always said, you're just going to show the people like uh, we can live together, we can work together, like we're present in peace for the war. Naja Ali was Termite's star pupil, a 106-pound fighter with a big man swagger. He walked by and he says, Mr. Termite, he says, I will be your one that goes to the Olympics, watch. And he walked off. So we want to go to the Olympics, especially me, of course. And I began training very hard with Termite. Amazingly, Iraq now had an Olympic hopeful, and with him, a rallying cry. Iraq is back. <laughs> it's a good slogan for us. That means Iraq is back to the people, to the freedom. Iraq is back to the all of life. This striking pair, an underdog Iraqi boxer and his American exterminator coach, was going to Athens, carrying the hopes of a struggling nation. The United States Olympic Committee invited Termite and Naja to train with their boxing team. And for one month prior to the games, Americans and the Iraqi fighter worked out side by side, training for the same dream, Olympic glory. And this kid and Termite come, and it's like they're embraced, they're backslapping everybody, and they're just like, I, I mean, I, I will say it, they're part of the, almost like part of the US Olympic team, even though they're from Iraq. Termite and Naja had accomplished the impossible. Good. Feel good? Awesome. Here's this American over in this war-torn country, you know, resurrects the program from nothing, and they're a million to one shot, and they go to the game and compete. With the eyes of a battered nation upon them, Termite and Naja took to the ring for their first Olympic match. Naja faced an experienced North Korean boxer, Against all conceivable odds, Naja Ali walked out victorious, demonstrating to the world the pride of a liberated nation. You had all the skeptics out there. Then, you know, he, he wins, and it's like, oh my God. Fearlessly, Termite Watkins had traveled a world away from his Texas home into a battle zone and forged Olympic victory in only 10 months. It brought tears to everyone's eyes seeing my dad on TV. It was the neatest feeling, you know, seeing him out there and coaching him. And I even told him, man, Dad, I didn't know you were such a good coach. And so he was like, you didn't think your old man had it in him, did you? It was the story of two free men, of courage and sacrifice, of an improbable bond. But it was so much more. Termite and his fighter had touched the world. He's changed the way that Iraqis think of Americans through Naja, him and Naja both. We talk about America is not good, American people is not good. But when I've been there, I changed my mind. It was about freedom. The Olympics was just the icing on the cake. And so we did good. He, he was a winner, and he won the hearts of the world. And so as Naja said one time when a, a Japanese reporter was asking me, he said, how did you feel about losing? And Naja said, did I lose? I'm free. I represented my country, and I did it well, and the world loves me.